Hello and welcome. It is Saturday, 28th day of April, 2018. It's also crypto day. Every day is such, at least until it's not. And I've heard things like HODL and HODL to zero. HODL to zero from Truth Never Told, Chris Dwayne of the Silver Shield. And that might be how it goes, but it also might not. Will the cryptocurrency survive as we come in the next several years? Maybe. However, as I've been stating on this channel, what I like to do is trade the markets, do the best I can in buying low, selling high, and then every so often turn cryptocurrencies into real items like precious metals and things like uh, food. It can be done. Okay, so it's Saturday. And I got ADA on the screen, but as far as Bitcoin is concerned and the list of codes that I'm going to show on this video, here is the list in alphabetical order. Now, how do cryptocurrencies fare on uh, particular days? Well, Bitcoin rather, and I've got some statistics. We are looking Saturday through Friday. On Saturdays, the average day, Bitcoin is up three quarters of 1% per day. That's fantastic, uh, really. Volatility, 6.27% per day. There has been three times on a Saturday where Bitcoin had a retracement of at least 10% down. And one time where it went up, at least that of 11%. Sunday is an inactive day. In fact, it's actually marginally down on those days. It's got the lowest volatility. That should come to no surprise. And it's only have it's never ever had a 11% update. It's only once ever retraced 10% on that day. And this is the last two years. This is over the last two years, going back to uh, April of 2016. Monday, average day up almost 1% per day. That's just fantastic. Volatility close to 6%. There's only been one time when the market fell 10%, but four times in the last two years, it's been up 11. And then each of the other days then following are up days every single day, practically. So there's no real day that's, oh, this is a very good or bad day to get into cryptocurrencies just based on the day itself. It should come to no surprise that Thursday and Friday has the largest volatility i would be expecting that i thought i would have thought friday higher than thursday but those are the statistics that i came up with today now on to cryptocurrencies and, and the fact that we can actually trade these on the market as it is done to me is just a fantastic uh, situation because yeah, when I seen how the places like E-Trade and all the traditional markets had it set up, it really wasn't designed like I see within the cryptocurrencies as, well, minimum bets a lot of times can be much cheaper in crypto space. Of course, with stuff like E-Trade and whatnot, you pay like $10 per trade. Makes it difficult to put even 50 or $60 on something when you're paying that much just to get in or out. So I found that a fantastic uh, feature within the cryptocurrency space. And I know they're either gonna do really well or not do well. And of course, that's an easy way of saying such, but maybe they will turn out to be a big fraud when it's all said and done. Question is, when it's all said and done, is that time coming soon? Will that happen? later this year 2019 sometime in the 20s or next decade well i realize that if it happens say much later then i'll be very much in great position because like i state whenever markets go up i like to profit take now i'm stating now and i don't say this too often that for what it's worth, the base market of alternate coins, I am very bullish, or I think there's a good chance that we are going to continue to go higher. ADA, as far as technical analysis is concerned, I see four different days, but even really three, 
April 17th, it comes up to a high of 34.05. And then up to 34.96 on the 20th day. A few days later on the 24th, up to 34.22. Here we stand at 37.80. So it's obviously broken past this level of resistance. It has not quite managed to go up to the next key Fibonacci point at 39.37. Something I would expect to pierce well above when it does. But short term, this level of previous resistance betweening 33.50 and 3,500 is something I'm now going to be looking at as a possible support mark when this overextended market decides it's going to correct back towards the downside. And like I stated, peer, well, Pierce above it, I got to think that this thing has the potential to go to at least 4,400, but I would even be thinking a significant move, maybe up to about 4,800, 5,000, somewhere in that area there. I think I'm missing a 76.4, which would probably be up towards that point. But it's barely, as far as I'm concerned, broken above it. It may take several days to get up to 5,000, like eight or nine, because markets generally go up a lot faster than they go down. Let's move on to the next code, however. And it is that of ADT ad token. I like the setup. That's pretty much what it comes down to. You have this move coming up to this resistance level, back down to the 18 average. And well, yesterday's session, it got above the 18 average of highs and stayed and held above that all day. Now it's staying and holding above even a little bit of a higher area. It's had tremendous amount of resistance amongst this area. I think this thing is poised for a decent run higher. And ARK, A-R-K. With recent action, you come up to this high, back down to the 18 lows. This session, after getting to the 18 average of highs, just consolidates within such, and now it has managed to come up to this previous level. It hasn't broken resistance quite as of yet, but it sure looks as if this thing is poised to do so with a previous area for where it came from. Uh, between 45 and the 50 handle. That's the next level I would expect it to go to. It probably should only take between a half hour to a day or two to get there. And when I say that, that's after it breaks resistance at around the 42 handle. Bitcoin Cash on the daily chart after monstrous days going up well overextended. Still overextended, but not well overextended. It's getting close, the 18 average of bands, that is. To reach and such, it's looking like a case of correcting through time. It's got a few more days to catch up to the 18, but either way, price action at the 0.15 handle. Nowhere near as overextended as it was when it first got there last on April the 23rd. Still, of course, overextended. A price correction can happen at any time. One of the key areas which it came from is at about 118 to the 120 handle. And when it's ready to break this past this resistance, I'd be looking forward to go to at least 0.2. Cloak, which has tremendous volatility when you look at all these up and down swing moves, but we can also notice the countless higher lows that have been uh, endured within this market since the late 2016 timeframe. And here we have this key level at the 140. What is this level? Well, it's Fibonacci from the big low and the big high. This is a 23.6% down move, which was resisted before. I'm seeing it supporting this area now, supporting that with the 18 average. Yesterday's session, green candle up to the 18. Now, it's retraced a little bit, but if it can hold this little area, I like this bullish pattern. It's basically its first price correction on this move. But when you can have a market go from 32 handle, and right now it's trading at 16, that means it's lost half its value. And it's doing so in a bullish correctionary phase. Volatility, yeah, it's there. Let's move on next to Dash, and what is the Fibonacci that I'm showing in here? 
Well, I got two lines, so it would represent the 38.2 and 61.8% levels from these highs and this lows from the looks of it. And it was resisted here on the early part of March before its leg lower. And how long did it take to go uh, down? It went March 11th through uh, April the 1st. That was a span of uh, about three weeks. The rally, well, I guess it came from April the 10th to April the 23rd, about two weeks. Markets go up a lot faster than they go down against Bitcoin anyway. So the move that got up to the key Fib line has come back and now has had a few days of hugging this 18 average of highs. Today's session right now is having a hard time showing strength as after the red day down, it is not progressing, but it's still hanging in there within the correctionary phase. I do realize that any further momentum is a very, very strong indicator. And I realize breaking past this level of resistance that the 76 handle is probably uh, next where it would be going towards. But because I've seen a little bit of weakness on the uh, more shorter term, if I take a look at this on the 60 minute, I realize that there's a big, big, big support mark at about the 522 handle. If I see weakness below that, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there'd be some okay down moves there after that. Looking next at DGB, which since it's broken out of its uh, sideways action on April the 10th, has done very, very well. Uh, resistance established, I guess you could say officially, uh, April 19th, because it's only once managed to come back to the band. It did so for six days, but it left the band a few days ago here on the 26th. Yesterday's session was further, uh, further gains, making new highs not seen since like February, early February. And it's pausing this session relatively well so far. As far as some price objectives is concerned, this thing is barely moving higher when we look at this in comparison to its December move and the one before. Here's a spot where it went from like 87 up to like 2600, oh, about a 30X gain, how do you do? And in here going from like 82 to like 880, so a 10 or 11X gain. How do you do? So far, this has had a gain of about double. So is it overextended? Well, not really. I don't think so. But but uh, it is well above the 18 average of highs. I'm looking to sell in these situations, but I'm obviously looking to sell more as the price rallies higher. Ethereum Classic ETC. This is uh, just a uh, wonderful pattern that I see on here where this big Fibonacci level at about the 2293 handle, which was supported here, supported a little bit up and or supported and resisted. It twice resisted this level once on April or March the 15th, and then again on the 20th of that month, decent leg lower. So now I've seen resisting coming back to the 18, but I like how the last couple days is really showing a nice little end of a congestion area, ascending triangle, similar type formations. But I think this is very well poised to break above. And if so, I wouldn't be surprised if it has some decent sized green candles or multiple days higher, where it can at least come in and test uh, up towards at least around the uh, 003 mark or a gain of a uh, 30% or more. Ethereum against Bitcoin appears to above Fibonacci after several round red down days in a row, rallying really nicely and definitely potential for further gains after going up to this high of the uh, 757 handle on April 24th. Uh, one single red down day, which pierced below the 18 of highs. But then we can see how it's been lifting off from that point. So to me, this thing looks ready to go for tremendous gains. I would expect it to probably pierce above the 787 handle and even get somewhere above 80 uh, at some point, but continue to grind higher might be the case. It's grinded all the way down. It's been grinding all the way up since it's reversal. And it's also the bull market because it's been sustaining this 18 average uprise for several days. Core is having a breakout day today, as far as I'm concerned, in the sense that uh, we had this resistance test of uh, 43.87 handle on April the 9th, and then uh, 
on the 20th, 11 days later, barely breaking it above 45.4. Uh, right now it's at 44.3, so pretty much at that point it has managed to have another higher high. Well, this 18 average is holding very, very well. But this level of resistance is, I would have to say, main, monstrously big at the 50 handle. And I do like how I see how this level of support matches its original resistance that it had at the end of 2014, 2015. So... Uh, definitely a lot of potential for core. Litecoin showing definitely weakness in my view in that a lot of altcoins are doing well. And Litecoin right now for its third day is just hugging with and consolidating its red down day at the 18 average of lows. Chopping above and below the 18 average for quite some time. But it has been overperforming and holding this level well. And what I like about this is that it is holding above uh, really the 154 handle, which was resistance before. And back uh, in 2017, that level, even though it was well above it and it supported it some, on some short-term occasions, the fact that it is held and stayed above it on this December move, I think, is very productive. And I think when it's ready to go, like we see in December, this thing go from double uh, 54 and have a very fast move to single 02. That was like a Forex gain just like that. It did that big here going from 003 up to 0.02, like a 7X gain really fast. And I think when it's ready to do that again, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing just, just goes off when it's ready to go because that's why I say so often when the cryptos are ready to go, they go. A lot of times there's fundamental news, social media doing what it's doing. I couldn't care much or less about it. I'll just uh, be ready to have my sell orders in place when it goes up and buy orders in place when it goes down. Let's move on to NXS, which uh, this interesting line, which was resisting uh, in March and April. i gotten above it. So from April the 10th through about the 17th, it uh, consolidated within that line and within the 18 average of highs, barely making a new leg higher on April 18th. Coming back down on the 18 average of lows, but I like how this is the third day. It has went from piercing below that to now piercing above the 18 average of highs. I think getting above the 30 handle, this thing has the momentum and potential to have some very, very big gains. NXT, which uh, broke out of resistance at about the 17, well, we'll say 1780 handle, has managed to climb up to 2540 has now retraced back down to the 18 average of lows, now spending the last couple days within the newly rising 18, thus having its first price correction from its move. It's now day like seven, eight, or something around that area, maybe even nine days, where it's just uh, consolidating within such. So now you're gonna see who wins this battle because if the market stops going up and just hangs in where it is, the 18 average will start to go sideways, thus neutrality. Getting above the 18 average of highs at about the 2400 handle, there could be definitely good reason this thing is ready to go off for huge, huge gains. If you see weakness at around 2200, uh, down to 2150, and you see that area, just any type of weakness, resisting the 18 lows, supporting down at the 2060 area, then you can definitely see reason where we might come down and test uh, a break below 1900 in that scenario. But the volatile moves that we see with NXT is just so massive that when you talk about what type of potential this thing has on the break of the uh, big resistance at around 2550, I mean, it can be massive because that's what NXT has the track record of doing. Omi's go after having uh, that big rally on April the 13th, but came back to where it came from resuming its uptrend. Had the big rally a couple days ago. Now it's just hugging, staying within the 18 average of highs on very low volatility. But overall, this market is supporting this area of resistance from the start of this year, which is really big. So getting above this, we would be looking to uh, have a move to the previous high of about the 326 handle as its next level. And then breaking above that is uncharted uh, waters. So yeah, let's move on to the next code. POT, pot coin, not uh, showing the greatest of bullish setups, if anything, showing more of a bearish setup 
After it barely broke resistance on April the 19th, showing a lot of the failed move, fast move situation, as it had a big red candle down day with a further one to the 18 lows thereafter. Two days of pausing it, then another big red candle breaking below that support, and now it's been consolidating, pausing, and resisting the 18 average of lows, which is newly declining. I wouldn't be surprised if this falls over and comes back down to the previous low of 1228. But if it's set up that comes in or is in place that doesn't do such, and right now the setup is in place to be bearish, if it doesn't happen, and you see price action showing bullish momentum above like the 1500 mark, then I'd be looking for the 18 average area of around 1600 and change to how that plays out. If it, because if it's not resistance or it only resists at short term, getting above that, I'd be looking at the last few days as the failed breakdown, the failed setup and all that type of stuff. And of course, getting above this resistance, look at some of the moves that it's had. Just one thing to note, there's nothing wrong with having sell orders in at like maybe 3,000 or 5,000 or 8,000 because you never know when it's going to come into place. Uh, but yeah, that's P-O-T. Let's move on to the next coin. And that would be red coin R double D. And uh, having this move of breaking resistance on April the 19th was really big because showing the validity of the buy on April the 11th, but I like to see it takes a little bit a week or so to get from a new leg higher extended well above the 18 to the 18 average of lows. And now three days in a row breaking out now above the 18 average of highs, having a lot of consolidation amongst the previous level that it to me looks like getting above that resistance should at least have the availability to go to the previous high at a bit about 120 but could even go further than that and maybe test in towards the 140 to 150 uh, previous congestion area from before. So that's RDD. Let's move on to the next one. And that would be STEEM or STEAM and big, big green update on the 25th. But it's been in a beautiful uptrend now for the month of April. A few days of consolidation above the 18 average of highs right now. So that's always a little bit productive as well the last time it had to consolidate for a bit more as it got up uh, there on april the 13th but it consolidated until its update on the 25th so it was almost two weeks of consolidation from the last one this one's only been four days and it's doing so in high volatility when we take a look at uh just uh some i think the three-day chart is where i want to go for this one the situation in here, it had a resistance level from the start of the year, close to where it's at now. It was a lower high to the 2017 mark, but I definitely think that if it can get above this point, that should at least get to the 90,000 handle. That's a 100% move, but overall, that's just a small leg higher to where you'd expect it to go to next, which is previous high of 2017. Looking at Strat, which uh, maybe might have retraced a little bit too much before because it came up to, this is a three-day chart, so let me just, uh, but yeah, it came up to here, retraced to a higher low, but barely, but within the three-day, starting to show signs of reversal on the uh, daily chart. This is uh, a beautiful setup as far as I'm concerned because it had a nice rally leaving the 18 average of lows on April the 12th, making its high seven days later on the 19th. Two red candles down to get to the 18 average of highs in the correctionary move. It spent the next week or so, or the last seven, eight days, correcting this move. Support well established at about the 62 plus handle. Resistance well established at about the 70 or so marks. So here we stand at 67 near the 18 average of highs. I think it's a great strategy, quote unquote, uh, pun intended, to get into this breaking above the resistance. I think the upside potential is relatively decent considering a move to like the previous congestion area and high at 100,000 and above is most certainly what I wouldn't be surprised to see. And heck, even over maybe like a month or so period, this thing could be priced in at uh, the 250 handle or a 4x gain that would not surprise me either however if this uh, hold if this sideways correction of this move fails and we see weakness within the 18 average of lows pretty much at around the 63 handle 
I would be very, very concerned moving forward. Now, at first glance, looking at SYS, which is Syscoin, it looks like it's barely overextended in that it's already went to a key spot where you'd think it would go to. Because back here, you're like, oh, where could this go in a rally? Well, previous high. Oh, now it's at previous high. But when we look at this on a longer t perspective, I see this breakout from like 150 Satoshi at the start of 2016. Then it makes this nice little low in the spring of 2017 at around 870. And then several hit low period between uh, 2,500 down to 1,860 from the uh, summer into the end of 2017. The most recent low is a higher one at around 3,700. The price action getting above this resistance. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if I can get up to the next level between the, that previous high here at around 8,000. Then this previously high here at about 11,000. It wouldn't surprise me even breaking new highs in that sense it's been making very nice higher lows over the last several hundred many several hundreds of days let's move on to tron 400 minute time frame i can only show you so much because this is all it's got but this thing is breaking out nicely it has gotten above this level of resistance so it's at the early stages for such don't be surprised if this thing continues and has decent moves higher because when it breaks level resistance i would expect it to do more than just beat it by this amount. So I wouldn't be surprised if this has further momentum as we move into the weekend. XEM or new economy movement has uh, been now uh, correcting this gain because it left the 18 average, the newly rising 18 average on April the 13th. Two great green candles up, a couple pause days, another decent green candle up. Two pause days after that, but then you had the red candle down on April the 21st which started its correctionary move within the 18. It's now day number eight within the correctionary move, spending three days thereafter it, staying within the 18 average of highs. A very volatile day on uh, April the 25th. It had a high from the previous level, but it came down to the 18 average of lows. And it's just staying in the area of the 18 closes over the last three days. So getting above the uh, 18 average of highs at around 4,600, I wouldn't be surprised if some large green candles or some big further momentum after that would come into place. And of course, if this uh, move fails, then we'd be talking about this entire rally in April being a failed move fast move. But I want to see weakness amongst the 18 average of lows before considering that as an option of anywhere decent, of anywhere within that of decent probability. XLM is Lumen, and uh, this is a situation where you have this amazing rally leaving the 18 average well extended from this point on April the 19th. Price corrects through that in price and comes down the 18 average of lows. Three days ago, it leaves the that point to the highs. Yesterday, it leaves the 18 average of highs, and today, a continued extension. We can see with price action where it's at now. It's a major resistance level and one that you're looking for on the break for decent size move. We have to think it has to go at least to this previous high between 56.79 and about 6300. I want to see something like this on a shorter term time frame. So let's go to three hour and see in there once it loads up how this level of resistance is and how it's reacting. And this just looks so beautiful because you got the points where it hit these uh, the, at price point at the start here, came down. But what I like about it is since it last came up there at 2300 hours on 426, back down to the 18, I am now seeing on this time frame about six or five periods or so where it's just hugging and supporting the 18 of highs. And this current period, which is uh, 40 minutes into it, is showing that it's ready to leave such. I think this thing is ready to go. Uh, throughout today should have some significant gains. We're pretty much done. Let's finish this thing off. And Verge is next. There's only going to be two more after this. Correcting within the 18 average, and it has been doing so for close to two weeks now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, about two weeks. It made this uh, nice little rally up to about uh, 800 or so. Now it's in at 772. Well, we'll see how this goes because it's in the neutral correctionary phase. 18 average starting to go flat. So I'm looking for momentum above uh, 786 
to say that this thing is ready to go for a decent leg uh, higher. Showing me any weakness at around 760 will get me very bearish. Right now, I'm very neutral as with a sideways 18 average. Two more codes with ZEC, Zcash being the next one, daily term time frame. This is a situation where you've uh, been starting the reversal of trend several days in a down move where it was allergic to the 18 average itself. It stayed well below it pretty much its entire run ever since breaking down below it on February the 17th. It ended the bear market hugging the 18 average of lows, but uh, once it changed that on April the 13th, getting above it several days where it supported the 18 of highs, about three as I can see, and it's doing so now on higher volatility. However, I do see that after the uh, green candle update on the 26th, yesterday was a red day and it's uh, pausing that, consolidating yesterday's down move. So when I take a look at this on a shorter term time frame, I do see all these higher lows in place, but I am seeing lower highs as well, showing a symmetrical uh, pattern, an indecision. And I do think there's a lot of reason to be concerned if this thing does manage to hold and stay below the uh, 307 mark but a lot of reason for strength getting above it but very very neutral right now and then again on the daily chart once uh because it's having its correctionary move if i'm seeing strength above 330 don't be surprised if we can start filling some of this gap uh closer to the dub uh, or the single 0.04 number Okay, finally, ZEN. What a beautiful pattern. I mean, it breaks the 18 average at about the uh, 252 handle, and it just continuously goes up to this point at about the 472 handle. So there's a gain of about 70, 80% from that point. It corrects back down to the 18 average of lows very nicely, but I do like how a couple days ago, it managed to have a green candle move to the 18 highs. Yesterday's session getting above it and it's just staying within it right now so getting above about the 472 mark let's take a look at this on the three hour itself getting above that point would be very much uh looking very very good but more so getting above this uh, previous resistance this is huge when you take a look at where this price has been uh, october of 2017 uh, piercing below a few times thereafter it uh, around the end of the year and then again uh, around the second week of January and then from the end of January to the middle of February how big this level is and for you to have a resistance at it again in the middle of April have this price correction if it breaks through above here this has got huge major potential moving forward thank you for tuning in to this uh, video so go through a lot of these different codes. My overall bias of the market with what I've shown is very much bullish, I think. And when I say bullish, that means I think it's probable that the altcoins over the next 3, 5, 7, 10, 20 plus days are going to be worth more heading forward, which means when I talk about like the codes like the Litecoin or any of the other ones I didn't comment because it's just, man, whatever. Codes like Feather Coins, it's not doing anything. It's not an uptrend by any means. Maybe they're good buys, maybe they're not, but maybe they are in the sense that a lot of the codes that I showed have, uh, have had good extension gains that these ones may be ready to go too. As I do think there's a decent chance that the entire crypto space does very, very well, similar to how it did at the end of 20. Uh, 17 and how it did through the uh, second quarter of last year. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a magnificent weekend. Bye-bye.